as we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we came. We'll be blessed because we came. We are people born of water and the spirit. We are people come to celebrate God's love. We have come to hear the word. We have come to share the bread. We have come to sing our praises to God above. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. friends and welcome to this Eucharistic celebration. This is the 22nd Sunday of the church's year. This Mass is offered for the following intentions. Soul of Sebastian Ferrau, Soul of John Waz, Soul of Mr. and Mrs. Baptist Krasta, Soul of Victor Miranda, Soul of Clotilda Pinto, Soul of Pius Fernandez, Soul of Christine Dias, Soul of Mr. and Mrs. Henry Rodericks, Soul of Constance Fernandez, Soul of Cecilia Correa, Thanksgiving to Perpetual Sucker, Thanksgiving to St. Joachim and Anne, Soul of Stephen Miranda, Thanksgiving to Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today the reading, especially the Gospel, teaches us that the Church of Christ has a prophetic role to play in this world. Suffering and persecution are part of this mission. We are called to be witnesses by words and by our deeds. For the times we have failed to be the light of the world and salt of the earth, we ask the Lord for pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We will now sing the Gloria.
Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. You have seduced me, Lord, and I have let myself be seduced. You have overpowered me. You were the strong. I am a daily laughing stock. Everybody's butt. Each time I speak the word, I have to howl and proclaim violence and ruin. The word of the Lord has meant for me insult, derision, all day long. I used to say, I will not think about him. I will not speak in his name anymore. Then there seemed to be a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. The effort to restrain it wearied me. I could not bear it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response to the psalm shall be, O oh God, my God, for you my soul is thirsting. Kindly repeat. O oh God, my God, for you my soul is thirsting. O oh God, you are my God, for you I long. For you, my soul is thirsting. My body pines for you like a dry, weary land without water. The response? Oh God, my God, for you, my soul is thirsting. So I gaze on you in the sanctuary to see your strength and your glory. For your love is better than life. My lips will speak your praise. Your response? O oh God, my God, for you my soul is the same. So I will bless you all my life. In your name, I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. My mouth shall praise you with joy. Your response? O oh God, my God, for you my soul is the same. For you have been my help. In the shadow of your wings I rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. Your response? O oh God, St. Paul to the Romans. Think of God's mercy, my brothers, and worship him. I beg you, in a way that is worthy of thinking beings, by offering your living bodies as a holy sacrifice, truly pleasing to God. Do not model yourselves on the behavior of the world around you. But let your behavior change, modeled by your new mind. This is the only way to discover the will of God and know what is good, what it is that God wants, what is the perfect thing to do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kindly rise to prepare our hearts for the gospel. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. May the Father. 
Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, enlighten the eyes of our heart, that we might see how great is the hope to which we are all called. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to make it clear to his disciples that he was destined to go to Jerusalem and suffer grievously at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, to be put to death and to be raised up on the third day. Then taking him aside, Peter started to remonstrate with him. Heaven preserve you, Lord, he said. This must not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle in my path. Because the way you think is not God's way, but man's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. For anyone who wants to save his life will lose it. But anyone who loses his life for my sake will find it. What then will a man gain if he wins the whole world and ruins his life? What, or what has a man to offer in exchange for his life. For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And when he does, he will reward each one according to his behavior. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last week we saw how Jesus chose Peter to be the leader of the church that he was going to establish. By saying it was clear that Jesus was entrusting to his apostles because when he spoke to Peter, he spoke to all the apostles because all of them went with him to Caesarea Philippi. So he was entrusting to, this, to his apostles a mission. A mission of continuing in his footsteps. Jesus had said at the time of his ascension when he called them on the Mount of Olives from where he ascended. When they had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or season which the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The church is called to be a witness to the ends of the earth. He had also said in John chapter 14, 12 to 14, Truly I say to you, he who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I go to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So signs and wonders will accompany the church, the early church. So it was a privilege to be chosen. Peter must have already started dreaming about 
what he would do to run the church. Because the responsibility was given to him. He was chosen as the leader. But then today's gospel passage, which follows immediately after last Sunday's gospel passage, forces Peter to go on the back foot to reflect on his role in the church. When Jesus talks about his suffering, because immediately after appointing Peter as the leader and giving the mission to his apostles who will be taking care of the church, Jesus now talks to them about him going to Jerusalem and there he will have to suffer pain. He will be crucified. He will die. But he also talks about his resurrection. Peter took him aside and began, began to rebuke him saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. You suffer and die at the hands of these people. No way. They cannot do this to you because remember, last Sunday, Peter had made this statement, you are the Messiah, the Christ, son of the living God. Son of the living God going there and submitting to these people, suffering under them, the one who is the Messiah who came to save will be killed by these people. No, Lord, this should never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Jesus calls Peter Satan must have come as a shock to Peter, surely. In other words, Jesus is telling him, look, I am not following you, but you are to follow me. The church that I am establishing is my church. So you have to be part of my mission and not to have your own agenda. I am not supposed to listen to you you are supposed to listen to me. With this faith and trust in you, I am going to entrust to you, my people, my church. So the first thing that the church must realize is this, that it is existing not as an independent entity, but the church is established by God and he already has a plan for her. We must all fit into that plan. We are not supposed to make our own plan. The mission of the church is to build God's kingdom, which is directly opposed to Satan's kingdom. That is why he says, get behind me, Satan. Don't think that I am going to follow you. I am come to put you in your place. So by calling Peter Satan, he is conveying to Peter a very, very important message and a very, very important message for us as a church. Today, we hear people saying, Satan has entered the church. Not all, but a few of them are saying that Satan has entered the church because they see so many things happening in the church. We must realize that we are not fighting a battle, but we are at war. This is important for the church to understand. We are not fighting a battle, but we are at war. We must understand that Satan always comes in the way of God's plan. Let us look at some most major significant, significant attacks of Satan. We know the story of creation. God created Adam and Eve. He put him in that place called paradise. Satan did not like this plan of God. And we are told he came in the form of that serpent. The story is telling us 
that Satan immediately interfered with God's plan. And he destroyed God's plan. He was successful at that time. How he tempted Adam and Eve, they gave in. They followed Satan because his promise was more attractive for them. Again, we see, see another place where Satan makes a very major attack. And this time, he is confronting Jesus. You know, after the baptism of Jesus, he is now ready to begin his mission, to begin his ministry. We are told that the Spirit led him to the desert and he fasted there for 40 days. And Satan felt that, you know, this is going to be a new beginning. So I must destroy it right now. Because once Jesus goes back from the wilderness, he will begin to attack me. This is very important. So he is tempting Jesus. And we know he failed this time. He failed. Because Jesus did not listen to him. So the mission is not simple. The mission that Jesus is entrusting to his apostles when he says, Peter, you are the rock and on this rock I will build my church. It was in response of a particular faith that Peter made. That is very important. You are the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God. Power. Jesus says, my mission involves suffering and struggle because we read today, immediately after that promise, Jesus is now talking about is suffering. He plainly tells his apostles, if you want to follow me, you must take up your cross and follow me. Yes, you will do greater things than me. But all this must be done in the context of the mission that I am giving you. The power of the Spirit will come upon you. But this power of the Spirit is not to be used for your own benefit. It is given to you so that you may be my witnesses. So that you may follow me. The things that I have begun, the ministry, the mission that I have begun, you have to continue. You cannot have your own agenda. So many of them, when they receive this power of the Spirit, we see also in the New Testament, they want this power so that they see this power in the apostles, the disciples. Huh? At one point, someone, is, someone wants to buy this power. Someone named Simon. He says, sees the power that is there in Peter and the apostles and he wants to buy this power. This power is not given for your personal benefit. This is what Jesus is saying. Now, he goes one step forward and he makes a very clear statement. Peter, I told you, yes, on this rock I will build my church. Now I am telling you that in this mission you have to suffer, you have to struggle. But now you are not ready. It looks like you are not ready. You are not allowing me to fulfill my father's wish, my father's mission, my father's goal. So he may gives him a choice and he says, if you want to follow me, you must be ready to take up your cross and follow me. That means suffering and struggle is part of this mission. Now, what is the cross or suffering that Jesus is talking about? This is important for us to understand. We need to be clear about what it is because people sometimes have a wrong notion of cross or suffering that Jesus is talking about. Some of them feel, oh, I'm having this pain and that pain, and you know, as a Christian, I'm suffering, and I'm suffering for Christ. No. Suffering can be self-caused, that is, bad habits, wrong lifestyle, addiction, etc., can cause suffering in us. Or there could be natural causes like illness, old age, People suffer because of illness and Jesus, in the context of Matthew chapter 16, is not talking about that kind of a suffering or that kind of a cross. But suffering is also a consequence of a cause. There is a difference. 
When you stand for a cause like justice, equality, peace, and you stand for what is right, you will suffer. We have seen this happening to us. We will suffer. At times, we will have to pay for this with our own life. There are people who have been, we read the newspapers, we see the TV, we read news, and we see so many people who stood for the truth, they are no more in this world. People don't like. So this is the suffering that Jesus is talking about. Jesus is suffering and death was for a cause. That's what he's explaining to Peter. Peter, you don't understand. You understand in worldly ways. You don't understand why I'm going to Jerusalem is because it is my father who has sent me. God so loved the world that he sent his only son into this world. I have come for this purpose. And so you are stopping me. Don't stop. You don't understand divine plan sometimes. We get lost in our own interest, in our own self. That suffering is not suffering. But when we suffer for the cause, and he was doing it willingly. You see, Jesus knew that he would go there, he will suffer. He will have to die on that cross. He did not turn back. Willingly, he accepted the cross. That's what we are told. Why? Because he was doing it for the salvation of the world. Pope Francis says, I read what he says, we need to avoid the spiritual sickness of a church that is wrapped up in its own world. When a church becomes like this, it grows sick. What Pope Francis is saying, that spiritual sickness means we are people inward looking. We are happy. We come to church, we pray, huh? we do a lot of devotions, and a lot of things we do. But we are still inward looking, a ghetto mentality, a people who are looking with, for, with and uh, looking at one another only. A church which is closed, the windows and doors are closed. That is what he means. He says, when a church becomes like this, inward looking, it grows sick. It is true that going out, now he says, it is true that going out onto the streets, means opening the door and going to the street, implies the risk of accidents. It can happen to anyone, no? If you are at home, you feel you're safe. If you go out, huh, you don't know what can happen huh, on the street. So, but he says, if, if today, he says, if the church is wrapped up in itself, what will happen is, if you look only to ourselves, it will grow old, and after old age, it will die. Correct? The church is supposed to be dynamic. And he says, if I had to choose between a wounded church, a church which goes out and is ready to be wounded, because, you know, I spoke about the mission of the church to be a prophetic church, going out. When you go out, when you stand for the right, when you stand for the truth, you will be injured. Injured in the sense people will talk about you, sometimes you have to give your life. So we, you may you lead a wounded life. But he says, if given a chance between a wounded church that goes out into the street and a sick, withdrawn church that lives within inside closed doors, I would definitely choose the first one. The one which is wounded. Why? Because it is important the mission given to the apostles is to move out. You will be my witnesses. You cannot be a witness behind closed doors and windows. You may say a lot of things. You may have lots of devotion. But you are supposed to be witnesses not only inside the church, to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the world. How can you be a witness to the ends of the year? the world, if you are inward looking, only happy with your own people. That is what Saint uh, uh, Pope Francis is trying to tell us. So now, with the establishment of the church, Jesus is clearly saying, two kingdoms will be at war with each other. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. We know in Mark, 
chapter 115. When Jesus began his ministry, he began this way. I'll read chapter 1, verse 15. The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. So Jesus begins his ministry by announcing the arrival of God's kingdom. And this is the mission that is given to the church to build God's kingdom in this world. There will be two sets of values will be at war with each other. The teaching of Jesus, that is the chief teaching of the kingdom of God, and the teaching of Satan, the kingdom of this world. Time and again, we will be in conflict, in confrontation between these two kingdoms. We experience in our daily lives the war, he says, not only battle, the war between these two kingdoms. And time and again, we are fighting battles. Okay, we are fighting battles. But it is a war between kingdom of God and kingdom of Satan. This, the church must keep this thing in mind, that we are fighting not against individuals, we are fighting against power, the power of Satan, which is prevalent in the world today. You cannot win a war by avoiding the battlefield, by shouting behind closed doors, no use. The battle cry must be heard on the battlefield. Correct or no? If you want to win the war, the battles must be fought not inside closed doors, but outside. Because Satan is powerful outside. Jesus said, I will build my church on a rock. He did not say, I am building my church on sand. Very clear. I am building my church on rock. Peter, your faith. Huh? Why? Because you will have to withstand opposition which will be so strong that you will need all the help that you need. That is why the spirit is given to you so that you should not fall or give in. Last week we heard Jesus telling Peter and I tell you, you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church and further he says and the powers of death hates shall not prevail against it. He is talking about the spiritual warfare that we are engaged in. Let us understand this. It is not a small thing. This mission is not small. It is a big mission. And the church is supposed to be a prophetic church. A prophetic church. Who is a prophet? Today's first reading explains very clearly. See, Jeremiah was chosen by God to be a prophet to a nation who will very soon be going into exile. Lot of things are going wrong in that community there, the Jewish community. And so when Jeremiah was uh, chosen by God, he was reluctant. Remember? He said no. But God somehow convinced him and said, so now he is in the middle of this chaos, in the middle of you know his prophetic ministry. And he is saying, Lord, you deceived me. Huh? You told me lies. If I knew, because what is happening now, I am all the time preaching to them violence, hatred. I am telling them that you will be attacked. I am telling them where you are going wrong. And in that process, I have been condemned by these people. So, if I knew that this was happening, I would have not taken up this. But there is a mixed feeling going on in his life. It's a mixed feeling. At the same time, he says, Lord, but I know I have a choice to keep quiet also. But you are so strong. You have seduced me. You are so strong that even if I want, I cannot keep quiet. My dear friends, it's a strong statement. Huh? We as a church should, should be like this. Yes, I want to hide. But if there is an injustice going on somewhere, where something wrong is going on somewhere, I cannot close my eyes. I cannot close the doors of my church and say I am safe inside. No. Though it is dangerous, difficult, I have to respond. This is a real Christian. This is the real church. This is what we are called to do. And this is the mission that is given to Peter and the church that he has founded. Now you may ask to end. You may ask
ask now, yes, Lord, I am doing all these things. I am sacrificing. I am suffering. You know, what is there for me in all this? What is there for me in all this? You may ask. Jesus, in today's passage, today's gospel, verse 27, he says, there is a reward for you. And I'm reading verse 27. For the Son of Man is to come with his angels. He's talking about when he comes finally on the day of judgment. So for the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay every man for what he has done. This is the reward that Jesus promises you and me. We are called to be a church which is dynamic. Let us pray for a moment, looking into our own selves and seeing whether we are cowards or are we ready to move into the world to forward and to establish the kingdom of God. Amen. We will now profess our faith. I believe, I believe in, in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God, we now lift up to him all our needs. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Pope, the bishops, the clergy, and the religious, that they may carry out the prophetic role to which they are called by correcting those who do wrong and encouraging who do right. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians may accept the hardships that come in the way of living of their faith, remembering that Jesus himself had been subjected to severe suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are struggling during this time of pandemic, for those who have lost their jobs, for those suffering from various illnesses, for those living in constant fear of uncertain future. Be their constant support and teach us that we need to care for one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us attending this online Eucharistic celebration may be blessed by you in every aspect of our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We lift up to you all these prayers and those that we make from the silence of our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen.
my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose, dis by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Oswald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, to you set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few announcements. Just to inform you that we have finished with all the mass intentions up to August end. We will accept new intentions on a weekly basis only for Sunday Mass. As you know, we have only Sunday Mass now. The intentions have to reach me by Thursday evening. If you want to give intentions for future Sundays, not the following Sunday, but some other Sunday, you can book your intention directly with me on WhatsApp, giving full details. That is, mention the intention, then name of the person giving the, in, the person who is giving the intention and the contact details. As announced earlier, if you want to contact me for any reason, you can do so by calling me on my mobile number or send a WhatsApp message. If you want to see me personally, you can fix an appointment and uh, I will meet you in the church, church premise, not on the first, uh, second floor in my room because as I said last time also, we are staying in a housing society, we, we cannot. So, take care and be safe. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Almighty and merciful God, 
who show your love to all creation everywhere. Hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Follow me, follow me, leave your home and family, leave your fishing nets and boats upon the shore, leave the seed that you have sown.